Welcome back to another Blue Jackets game reaction. For this one, we have to go all the way back to 2023 when dinosaurs roamed the earth with the Jackets getting an overtime loss against the Sabres in Buffalo by the final score of 3-2 to two in overtime. It was the second half of a back-to-back -back after their overtime win against Toronto. They've been playing a good number of overtime games heading into this one. And I did feel like throughout the game, especially in that third period, physical fatigue did become a factor for Columbus, which isn't a valid excuse as to why the team looked so lifeless because that's something that every NHL team has to deal with. But when you do consider the fact that the Jackets were on that second half of a back-to-back -back and the Sabres had gotten three days off prior, it kind of does make a little bit of bit of sense that the Sabres had more jump in their step later in that game than the Blue Jackets did. Honestly, Columbus, I thought was pretty lucky to get that game into overtime at all, especially with the amount of shots the Sabres were putting on net, especially late in that game. Uh, there are good things to take away for Columbus in this one, even though they didn't get the full two points, both in the short and the long term. Uh, one of them is that Daniil Tarasov looked like the goaltending prospect that the front office has been excited about for so long. In this one, you know, when he first came up this season from his conditioning assignment in the AHL with the Cleveland Monsters, it was a pretty bad time for him at the NHL level for the first few games. They were rough to say the least. He was given some time off, looked much more dialed in here, just had to make a lot of tough saves to hold Buffalo to just two regulation goals where there was some point blank chances. There were definitely points in that, in that second period, especially in that, in that third as well, where it looked like the Sabres were going to uh, take the lead late in that game, but instead they were stonewalled for whatever, for however it was able to be done by Daniil Tarasov, just a good game for him in general. Uh, but at the end of the first period that was mostly dominated by Buffalo, the Jackets would get some zone time with Severson, Severson jumping on a bouncing puck to make it 1-0 Columbus at the end of the first. Seemed like a huge momentum boost that would give the Jackets a bit of Bit of a more energized start to the second period, but the Sabres would answer with, with a goal of their own just 40 seconds into the second. It was Jack Quinn hitting that goal there. The Sabres would press for more, eventually getting a power play on a, on a hooking call on Fantilli that was a little bit rough, in my opinion. Not the worst call I've ever seen, but certainly not the best either. Certainly not getting the benefit of the doubt with the officiating as of late. That just might be one of... Um, Something that Fantilli has to deal with with his rookie season. It might take him a few years to get to get that whistle on his side a little bit. However, the Jackets penalty kill does hold strong, thanks in large part to a great effort by Justin Danforth on that kill. Had a, had a close chance early in the penalty kill, a little bit of a uh, breakaway attempt, but then just as the penalty kill was ending, Cole Sillinger would spring Danforth forward just as Adam Fantilli left the box, le leading to a 2-on-1 with Fantilli making a great effort to get Fantilli the puck on a 2-on-1 goal. A bit of a spinorama pass from Justin Danforth, who has been playing really good hockey as of late. I'm glad that uh, Danforth has already signed through next season at the at the deal that he got because he is certainly he would certainly be earning himself a lot more of a pay raise if he wasn't already signed through next season. And uh, Adam Fantilli finishing it past UPL to make that a 2-1 to one game. Fantilli also had a pretty good game in my opinion, but uh, UPL was also pretty solid in net, in net when he had to be. Again, they made it a 2-1 game, which that would hold to the end of the second period. And the third period, it, it is kind of what we've seen a lot of. I don't think necessarily this was a conscious choice of the Jackets kind of just turtling and letting the Sabres get shot after shot. I do think that's, that this was a Sabres team hungry for a goal, hungry to get a good result at home, and also just a, a very tired Blue Jackets team, which again, not a valid excuse for losing two points but it is it, that, that's just a circumstance of the thing but in the third period it was a middle stat shot getting by Tarasov that you know Tarasov might want back but considering the saves that he made earlier in the game maybe that's just to make up for one of the point blank chances that Tarasov denied so I'm not going to be you know I'm, I'm not going to be freaking out about Tarasov's long-term development because of that goal getting let in when when you have all the evidence that we saw from him earlier in the game that you know he might be pretty good at this NHL goalie thing just he might need he might need you know, it was just coming off of, a, of an injury conditioning assignment. But uh, Columbus more or less hanging on for the rest of the game to enter the overtime period. And that overtime period, just not great for Columbus with Pascal Vincent going with the opening three of Danforth, Goudreau, and Severson. Honestly, two of those three, I don't mind being out there first. But I honestly can't think of any good reason other than injury as to why Adam Fantilli isn't the first center out there in overtime, especially with both Boone Jenner and Sean Crowley out. You're not doing the gimmick where you're trying to win the face off and then get one of those guys off the ice as soon as possible. With Adam Fantilli being that top line center, I feel like you probably should throw him out there. I know Justin Danforth had a good game. He's been playing really well, but I feel like I would rather see the future and right now currently kind of present 
face of the franchise out there as well. Uh, but either way, the Jackets commit an icing penalty. It didn't look like Fantilli was going to be the next guy on, but the icing kind of negated that. Jeff Skinner getting a shot past Tarasov that Goudreau just couldn't quite get to before Skinner was able to bury it. And that made it 3-2 to two Buffalo, ending the game in overtime. So it's tonight, it's the Jackets starting 2024 at home against the Bruins. You know, if they, if they want to convince the NHL that it's a new year, new Jackets, a convincing win over Boston might turn some heads in that direction. Uh, some New Year's resolutions for the Jackets. I think the biggest one would be to be able to sustain a positive play after grabbing a lead, especially in that third period where that certainly was a struggle for them in 2023. Haven't really seen an issue with getting back in a game. I feel like the Jackets have um, made some good comebacks this season so far, like in that Florida Panthers game a while back. And I feel like the Jackets do show plenty of fight when they're down from behind and getting back into it. But once they grab a lead and it's been an issue with them being able to hold on to that lead. And it's been a bit of a struggle for them this past year. So obviously that, that could be a, a resolution for them. Obviously they, they want to get and stay healthy, but I, I'm not sure how much control the Jackets will have over that in the future. But that's going to do it for me in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far into it, feel free to leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'd like to see more like it. I cover some more teams in Ohio. Maybe like those videos as well if you like this one. But once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the next one.